Hi there, this is part two of the video on how to find critical values. I'm going to show you here how to use the following table to find your critical values stroke percentage points. Here we're given the area to the right of our percentage point. Say I want to find a product that Z is less than A, which comes to 0.975, or after the figure A. Okay, let's sketch the standard normal. We know it's centered around zero. Recall that the area under the curve comes to one. So the question is, where does A lie? A is along this horizontal line somewhere, all right? Because that is Z. Everything along this line represents Z. But I'm along here somewhere. Well, look, because the area comes to one, and because it's symmetrical around zero, we know that half the area must be to the left of zero, and half the area to the right of zero. We've got here area of 0 0.975. Well, that area is bigger than 0.5, or if you like, convert to percentages. It's bigger than 50%. So it must be down here to the right of zero. And also because you're saying 97.5% of the area is to the left, it must be quite far to the right. All right. So that is my point A. So we know that the shaded region here is 0 0.975. It's important to know whether A is to the left of zero or to right of zero because if it's to right of zero we know it's positive value of A. If it's left of zero we know we're after a negative number. All right? Our tables gives us only positive values of A. So we go so we know that this A we're after is is a positive number. Now our table doesn't give us like in part one, our table now is giving us the area to the right of the point A, not to the left. All right, so this is equivalent, therefore, to if I do the same sketch, okay. Uh, so this A must be equivalent to finding the A such that the area to the right of A is two and a half percent because we've just said this area here to the left of A is 97.5 so the area to the right must be 2.5% because that way those two areas come to 100% alright so to state it algebraically after that Z is greater than A is equal to 0 0.025 2.5% go to our table next recall that the percentage points, or what you call critical values, is given in the row and first row on, down here, up to the first decimal place, and along here, up to the second decimal place. All the figures in the body are the probabilities to the right of our percentage point. We are after the figure 0 0.025. So we're sliding along here. Notice that the figures are decreasing as I'm sliding along like this, so I go quite quickly. All right, here you are. 0.02, and it's decreasing. 0.025. There, I've got it exactly. 0.025. There. So the, up to the first decimal place of the percentage point is given here at the, at the start, about 1.9. And the second decimal place is obtained if we just trace up to this heading, 0.06. So we've got 1.9 and 0.06 added together, 1.96. So from the table, from the table we get that A is equal to 1.96. Finally, we're looking for a Z we're finding A such that Z is between minus A and plus A, and the error comes to 0.9. That's 0. We've got a plus A. We've got a negative A. So they're the same numbers, just different sign. And the sh shaded region between minus A and plus A is 0.9. OK, again, we have to think about how what is it that we're looking for because we're looking at the pro probabilities um, of z bigger than a i we're looking at area to the right of uh, right of the percentage point
we'll note that we're only after one of the a's because we can get the other one just by changing the sign because these two numbers are the same just different in sign we can take this positive a because our percentage points in the table are given in terms of positive values not negative values so we'll take this one well look our table gives us to the area to the right of the point a and let's look back here if the area between if the area between minus a and plus a is 0.9 it must mean the area the remaining area must add up to 0.1 i.e. 10% and by symmetry it must mean the areas are split half half so this must be 5% or 0 0.05 0 0.05 in other words this segment here is 0 0.05 so to find the value of a in the original question is same as saying that we're after this a where z bigger than a is equal to 0 0.05 I can now use the table because I've re-expressed the problem so that we've got of the form z is bigger than something because that's what the table gives me so 0 0.05 we're after that let's go up here where's that okay it's still falling it's around here look 0.0505 and 0.495 so it straddles 0.05 let's pick up those figures so for 0 0.0505 that percentage point is 1.64 and the other one will be 1.65 so let's write that down right so I've written it down probably that z is bigger than 1.64 that's the value of a is slightly bigger than what we want it's at 0 0.0505 so it's above what we want by 0 0.0005 this figure all right and probably the next one is probably at z is bigger than 1.65 is gives me slightly lower how much by not 0 0.0005 it's lower isn't it because if we add 0 0.0 0 0.05 to this we'll get 0 0.5 not 0 0.05 sorry now what do we do then how do we find this a well this is where uh, teachers might uh, differ in what they tell the students you could just round down so just state the answer is 1.64 you could round up state the answer is 1.65 you could just leave it at saying oh the answer must be between 1.64 and 1.65 okay you could also use some kind of guessing method what they call interpolation now I've represented on this line here we're after 0 0.05 you see that 1.64 gives us slightly above by 0 0.005 and the other one one point critical percentage point 1.65 give me slightly below by the same amount because it's by the same amount we it's, it's ha, you know it's half halfway along for each one we could say this could take the percentage points and do the same thing we could say oh let's just take the halfway point between 1.64 and 1.65 I just take the average and that would if I did that that would give me 1.645 okay so if we didn't use the averaging method we would be off by just uh, the second decimal place now I tell my students not to worry too much about interpolation because you know these tables were created in the days when the computing power was very low these days our computers will cal calculate the exact value of a for us and you know if we're doing real statistics that's what we'll be doing using computers we won't be doing this by hand so hence this thing here, uh, this interpolation business, uh, or how how we reached A if it's not given exactly, isn't uh, isn't too much of a concern. Okay, that's the second part of out of three part video on critical values using the Z table, Z table. Finally, the final part of the video, for part three, I'll be looking up the critical values if in your course you are using tables that gives you this okay I'm Phil statistics mentor